Hello, my name is Dan Popescu. I'm an investment analyst specializing in precious metals and more specifically gold and silver. First of all, let me wish you all a happy new year. It's my first report for 2017. Uh, the last report that I did was in uh, at the beginning of December and uh, in December nothing really happened in the gold and silver industry. Uh, everything was quiet. Uh, it started to move uh, starting with uh, January uh, and uh, with uh, noises made by, uh, by Donald Trump. Uh, what I told you in uh, December, at the beginning of December, that I do not expect uh, the price of gold and silver to move uh, before April and that the, and that, uh, the, the Trump bubble uh, will take time to, uh, uh, to evaporate, to burst. Uh, it's uh, it's confirming, but it's moving much faster than I expected. Uh, Donald Trump uh, seems to be somebody who is very controversial. He likes to uh, to uh, uh, to uh, to govern, to to do business by conflict. Uh, he's a bully, uh, no question about it. This is the way he he negotiates. This is the way he has been since his entire uh, adult life i've been following donald trump since uh, 1980 and i'm not i'm not at all surprised in uh, in the way he is uh, uh, conducting himself uh, uh, right now it surprises a lot of people it doesn't surprise me it's exactly what i actually expected from him uh, it's uh, 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 it's very important uh, to analyze donald trump because uh, it's uh, it's a major country, United States, and it has been the country of the de facto currency of the world since nineteen uh, since the collapse of Soviet Union, and and actually uh, I would say since the collapse, yeah, so uh, collapse of Soviet Union, we had a, a period in nineteen seventy one when Nixon took uh, uh, the dollar off the gold standard. Uh, gold uh, continued to have some impact and importance in the international monetary si system. It faded in the background, uh, background when in 1980 the dollar started going up again. And from 1980 until about 2005, uh, 2008, we've been in a de facto uh, uh, dollar, uh, US dollar standard uh, that dominated. Uh, from 2008, things have changed, and the dollar ha has started to lose its uh, uh, its importance as the foundation of the international monetary system. And you can see on a chart, I put it on my Twitter account, a chart of uh, the change in uh, gold reserves by central banks around the world, which have been going down since 19, about 1965, constantly that drop stopped in 2008 and reversed up to now in 2016 we recovered about 60 percent of the drop in reserves global uh, uh, central bank reserves gold reserves uh, about 60 percent of that drop was recovered and i expect the next part that will bring us to the same level that we were uh, about uh, in 1965. Uh, uh, it's going to be much faster. I expect about 3,000 to 5,000 tons to be bought by central banks. And uh, what makes me believe that uh, is that uh, even people who are very anti uh, anti-gold if you want, uh, the economic profession who does not believe a return into the gold standard uh, uh, are really uh, uh, a little bit hypocritical or they, they, they contradict each other because on one way they want gold out uh, and they don't want gold to be a, a, a currency but uh, in another way, m or money, more, more pro correctly, uh, they recommend that central bank buy gold. Uh, the latest is uh, uh, Professor Kenneth Rogoff, uh, who wrote a book, uh, and a war, I mentioned it in a previous report, uh, on paper money and uh, uh, once uh, uh, people, uh, countries to abandon paper money and, and coins, metal money, 
and switch to electronic money so the state can better tax, control, confiscate uh, uh, money from people, from individuals. And he recommended in a recent article, and keep in mind, Kenneth Rogerth is, he was an economist working for the uh, International Monetary Fund, and uh, uh, he worked for the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States. So he's somebody who's listened to and consulted by central banks uh, uh, worldwide. And he recommended in the most recent article that he wrote that, uh, and I mentioned to you uh, several times in, uh, in the fall, uh, he mentions that central banks from developing countries should increase their uh, gold uh, uh, portion of reserves uh, to, uh, to, to be at least 10% or more of their international reserves uh, in gold. Uh, that's very interesting because I, I checked off the, a list of countries who uh, have less than 10% and there are not many who can still increase it. Switzerland is one example who used to have a lot more and now it's under 10% and uh, China. But keep in mind that uh, China is already buying excessive quantities of gold. How much can they increase more without affecting the price on the market? I don't think, I think there are the limit where if they start increasing too much, they will start affecting the price of gold, which I think it's going to happen. So you see, you see here uh, a change in, in attitude uh, towards, which confirms a little bit uh, what I said, that my expectation is that central banks will buy, uh, continue to buy gold, it's not finished, and uh, 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 until they get uh, uh, an important portion of their reserves uh, in gold. Uh, I mentioned that uh, what China and Russia are trying to do, uh, just to mention that Russia is already, they started accumulating much faster than China in 2008, uh, under a recommendation by uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, and now there are around 15% of their reserves, 5% uh, over what uh, uh, Kenneth Rog Rogoff uh, recommends. And uh, uh, just to caution you is that uh, I and many people, and I mentioned in many reports, uh, China has 2.3% of their reserves. They are far away from 10%. But you have to be very careful because China hides, uh, I'm quite sure, part. I, I don't uh, believe that they have around 2,000, less than 2,000, 1,800. I think there are over 4,000 in reserve, but in a different account, ready to transfer it at the right, uh, right time. So that, for me, it's bullish because I expect at a certain point, to do uh, central banks to do a run on gold. I said it for a long time that I believe that there will be a run on gold the same way as it happened in 19, between 1965 and, uh, uh, and 1971. Uh, there was a run on gold, exchanging dollars for gold that forced Nixon and United States to stop converting dollars into gold uh, to central banks at the official rate uh, in, in 1971 uh, and uh, in, two, in uh, uh, 68 because they first tried to support suppress the price of gold with the London gold pool there was a reaction of South Africa producer of gold in collaboration with the country Switzerland the, the gnomes of Zurich uh, uh, that uh, try to steal the, the market from London, from the London gold pool to Zurich, and they achieved because in 1970, Zurich had, in, uh, before 1970, London had 70% of the mining gold was transferring and, and going through the London market. And by 1970, Zurich had... 70% uh, of the mining world, global uh, uh, mining in uh, gold was going through uh, Zurich. So the gnomes of Zurich re re uh, managed to defeat uh, the, the cartel, if you want, uh, the pool, the London pool of central banks. The Zurich pool was, the London central uh, pool was uh, government controlled by Western central banks, European mostly, and uh, North American, 
and the law, uh, Zurich pool, which was mostly the three big uh, uh, private banks of Switzerland, Credit Suisse, Union, the Bank, Swiss, Union Bank of Switzerland, and uh, uh, Swiss Bank Corporation, and with uh, uh, the mining industry in South Africa uh, together, a little bit the, the South African government, and they managed to break the London pool, government uh, control pool, in 1968, when uh, de Gaulle, uh, president of France, and France left the first one and created a run on gold uh, by central banks from around the world trying to exchange their uh, dollar reserves into uh, gold, forcing the United States in 1971 to completely uh, stop uh, uh, exchanging dollars for gold, which is, a, in a way, a bankruptcy. I hear some very often economists in the United States saying the United States has never declared bankruptcy. It has about three times, I think three or four times in its history. And the last one, it's not a thousand years ago, but in 1971, that the United States defaulted on its obligations by refusing to convert their uh, certificates, which was the dollar certificates, which they promised and signed that they will convert them into gold. And in 1971, all those who had papers, American papers, found themselves with the windows shut by United States. That's bankruptcy. Call it whatever you want. America declared bankruptcy. And this is not a thousand years ago. This is about 40 years, uh, uh, 50 years ago in 1971. So it is possible the United States can do it again. Uh, especially with a president who loves bankruptcies and who calls himself the, himself the king of bankruptcy. So uh, it's something that I think worries countries like Russia, China to accumulate gold, which is not an obligation, which is not a debt. It's the only reserve of central banks which is not a debt uh, against somebody, which is an asset, a real uh, a real asset. So that's why countries like China and like Russia are uh, uh, accumulating gold and they want to join what I call the club, which is the, the countries which have between 8,000 and 11,000 tons of gold. 8,100 uh, about uh, that and 33 uh, tons of gold is uh, United States. The Eurozone, European Union, has about 11,000, more than 11,000 uh, tons of gold. So uh, both China and Russia are trying to uh, uh, achieve uh, a level of around 9,000 to join, to be in equal footing with the European Union uh, and with the uh, United States. To a certain extent, uh, in a different way by, uh, by uh, monetizing the, the private gold in India because keep in mind that India has one of the largest stocks of gold. Uh, uh, it has almost, uh, uh, central banks have about 17%, 17-18%, uh, let's say about 20% of all the gold that has ever mined, uh, been ever mined above ground. It's central banks and in private and, uh, and temple hands in India, uh, there is about 20%, maybe 30% of all the gold around the world is in India. So what the government of India is trying to do, because it doesn't have much gold, I think it has about 400 tons, uh, it's not much, is to, is to monetize that, that incredible amount of gold that exists in, uh, in temples and in private hands, uh, a little bit what uh, Turkey has done, same strategy. But uh, uh, this is what uh, uh, Russia and China are trying to achieve. And uh, uh, in this geopolitical environment, with Donald Trump, who has challenged uh, the existing uh, status quo of the international uh, system, uh, is uh, uh, is putting pressure on countries, others uh, uh, like the European Union, like China, and like Russia, 
to uh, uh, to find themselves to separate themselves to put her at themselves at uh, at, uh, uh, at safe distance from United States by selling U.S. Treasury debt and converting it and there is nothing else as liquid to put it into is gold. Now there are other assets they can can do it in real uh, buying businesses buying uh, natural resources and China is already doing it but that has also limitation and the most liquid asset that they can buy is gold and that's what the, both China and uh, 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 Russia are uh, doing uh, because they are worried with Donald Trump that, that, that he might bank, uh, declare bankruptcy uh, in some form or another, call it whatever you want, uh, 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 freeze uh, uh, assets. And economists and many people are saying, hey, the Chinese can't touch America. We can always freeze their assets uh, in the United States. So the threat is there. And it's not only talk, because they've done it with, with Iran 30 years ago. They freeze the assets of, uh, of Iran. So it's not something that the uh, United States has never done. So I'm making, uh, I'm making uh, uh, imaginary attacks against United States reputation. United States has done it uh, uh, with, uh, with Iran is, uh, is the most uh, known example. But we've done it with other states and has threatened to do it. Uh, and uh, 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 they can do it. So uh, that, that puts pressure on China and Russia, especially uh, uh, China, and especially that, uh, that Donald Trump has clearly indicated that he is ready to, make, to, to, to go to war with a, a trade war with China. United States has a trade deficit uh, with most of the world. But the biggest trade deficit they have is one with China and second with the European Union. So expect uh, uh, Donald Trump to, uh, to attack those two areas and he has expressed his intention. Now his strategy against the European Union was is to break up the European Union. His best advisor and the closest advisor, Mr. Bannon, uh, has a, a, a pol political movement that has already installed itself in the UK and is expanding in France. I think they hired uh, the, the, the niece of the uh, far-right uh, national, uh, national Front political party of uh, uh, Marine Le Pen. Uh, her niece was hired by the far-right American movement of Bannon. Uh, to be uh, to work for them, and uh, they're opening a, a chapter, a branch in Germany for the elections in Germany to fight Angela Merkel with the uh, uh, the far right party in Germany. So uh, uh, they already uh, have a strategy to interfere in European elections. Uh, very bizarre because Americans are complaining that the Russians interfere in uh, in the European uh, in American elections. Uh, uh, Mr. Bannon and Donald Trump make no, no, uh, uh, they're not hiding their intention to do everything possible to break up Europe into pieces. Uh, uh, that's the strategy, and it's the strategy that it's been Donald Trump's strategy uh, deal with a weak uh, par uh, uh, adversary, weaken the par uh, adversary divide him from his uh, uh, partners and splitting Europe and negotiate with Germany, with France, with Italy separately. This way you, you negotiate uh, in, in a position of strength while Germany uh, negotiates in a, a position of weakness. And we've, been, we've seen this strategy uh, when Mr. Ross, the, the Secretary of State, future Secretary of State of Donald Trump of Commerce said, yeah, we, we like and we want a partnership with the UK, but as long as it's in the advantage of the United States. So they have no intention of give any favors to, uh, to UK. Uh, they want UK split from Europe, but uh, at a disadvantage 
uh, with the uh, advantage USA uh, privilege to United States. So that is the strategy with Japan, and it's the strategy to with Europe splitting Europe into pieces. And it's the same strategy that they have with Russia. Split Russia from China, China economically is much weaker alone, uh, and that will make uh, at least that's the, the, the theory of, the, uh, of Donald Trump and his uh, team, uh, Mr. Bannon, is that we will manage uh, Vladimir Putin once he is split from, uh, from the support from China. So it's the Nixon strategy where, uh, where he split it, uh, 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 Russia from, uh, uh, from uh, China. So he's trying to do the same strategy, and he's trying to repeat the strategy of uh, uh, Ronald Reagan. Uh, uh, unfortunately for him, he doesn't have the same environment conditions that uh, Ronald Reagan had. Uh, the market was at the bottom uh, at that time. Uh, the Cold War was still going on, so uh, about two-thirds of the world was not consuming. It was shut down. I lived 14 years under that, uh, that uh, system. Uh, we were closed. We are not consuming any products. Uh, all the natural resources were only consumed by Western Europe, in other words, half of Europe, North America, and Australia, Japan. Since 1990, we have China consumers, we have Russian uh, consumers, India has opened, it was not shut completely, but still very uh, closed in a way. So uh, now you have about 60% of the world competing with the United States and Western Europe, which uh, did not exist. So Donald Trump has a different environment uh, than he had. Repatriating jobs, as Donald Trump promises, even if the jobs leave, the, 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 uh, the manufacturing jobs leave China, they will not come to humans in the United States. Uh, I paid the price and my, my colleagues who finished university in the 1980s with engineering, physics degrees, chemistry degrees, uh, we came at a time where there was a war on the, on the blue-collar jobs, manufacturing jobs. All those jobs were lost in 1980, and contrary to what Donald Trump believes, uh, uh, they were not stolen by China. They were stolen by computers, by robots. Manufacturing went robotics in 1980, so all of our uh, uh, graduates in, in, in physics, in, in chemistry, in engineering, mechanical, aeronautical, electrical engineering, we found ourselves and all the blue-collar jobs in plants being stolen, taken away from us to robotics. Now, how did the job get into China? Well, in 2000, after the breakup of the Soviet Union, and the opening of China, China stole the jobs, but they didn't steal the jobs from human and North Americans. We lost the jobs in 1980 to robots. The Chinese with slavery jobs, low, very low paying jobs, and Indians in India with the call center, they stole the jobs from a uh, uh, computer, uh, software industry in California, those kids who used to make a lot of money writing software, all those software jobs went to call centers, uh, to software uh, offices in Bangalore, in, in India, and later in China. The, the Chinese stole the manufacturing jobs from the robotics so in 2000, those who stole uh, the Chinese did not steal jobs from American workers, as Donald Trump supporters and Donald Trump uh, uh, preaches. The, the one, China stole the jobs from robots. So when, when uh, uh, Walmart and all those companies in the United States, in Boston, when they shut down their plants, actually they 
they fired, they put on unemployment, on lockout, robots, not American workers, and they were replaced by labor, extra cheap labor, slavery labor in China. So uh, if jobs comes back to United States, they will come back to cheaper, supposedly today we can make we can make robots because in 1980s and 90s robotic manufacturing was still very expensive a robot costed millions of dollars it was more efficient than humans but it costed a lot of money chinese slavery jobs were able to undercut uh, uh, even a, a computer a, a robot in the united states who only required two or three engineers and supervisors rather than a hundred or a thousand workers uh, in Detroit. Uh, so 1,000 workers were replaced by a few software engineers and uh, electrical uh, uh, engineers, and the electrical engineer supervisors were laid off with the robots in 2000, and the jobs went to slavery labor in China. Now there is talk that robotics has become even more efficient and less expensive and they can even undercut uh, and salaries in China went up. So now America can bring jobs back, uh, but they will not go to humans, they will go to robots. How is that going to help the American economy and, and uh, American uh, workers? Uh, uh, I don't think it's going to work the way the, uh, Donald Trump uh, and his supporters have, uh, have in mind. But that is uh, uh, the, their uh, argument in the trade war with, uh, with China. So in this trade war, what, what is the relation with gold and silver? Gold is, uh, uh, and silver are the currencies of last resort. When there is trade wars, when there is uh, uh, currency wars, uh, people go into real currencies, into gold and silver. Uh, gold and silver are geopolitical currencies like the other currencies, paper currencies, but they have an advantage over the other currencies because they are not a debt uh, and they cannot be confiscated by the state. So that's what, uh, why it is an advantage for, uh, uh, for the gold market. Uh, uh, as I said, there are a, a few uh, points that I believe it will help uh, gold uh, move much higher to this year uh, than it has been moving last year. And uh, one is this uh, run by central banks as they did it in the 1970s uh, with the breakup of the London gold pool and uh, uh, the Zurich uh, gold pool uh, and uh, 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 made the gold price uh, with the help of the Zurich gold pool, go from uh, from about 50 under 100 up to 850. Uh, same move I expect to happen with quantum leaps moves. Rather, the, uh, what I mean by that is that the price will not go by 10 dollars or 15 dollars uh, uh, in a, in a day, by, but by 100 or 500 dollars a day. Quantum moves uh, straight, not not linearly like that, but right straight uh, moves uh, like it happened in the 1970s with parabolic uh, uh, move of the speed of price uh, uh, which only happened in the 70s uh, the price increase from 2000 up to, to today was linear uh, it was uh, the speed was constant uh, what I expect is that the speed of price to be uh, accelerating. In other words, acceleration increase uh, in price. I wrote about that in, on a few uh, articles. Now, if you want to know about uh, what's the difference between the London Gold Pool and uh, the Zurich Gold Pool, I also wrote about three months ago two articles uh, uh, discussing and describing those two pools and how the uh, situation resembles and it could come back uh, again uh, in the next uh, bull market in the price of gold and, and, and silver. Another, another positive for gold and silver today it is this geopolitical situation where uh, Donald Trump has chosen a situation of uh, a, a strategy of conflict 
with everybody and negotiating separately with each one. He doesn't like international institutions like the International Monetary Fund. He's going to be very negative in, in uh, have, uh, have a, ne a very uh, negative and conflictual uh, approach to the G20, to the G7 uh, in uh, May and June. And in that environment, I don't see uh, success for a global currency like the SDRs. Uh, uh, I see more an advantage to gold in that environment. Besides that, the team of Donald Trump and Donald Trump is also very pro-gold, con uh, contrary to previous administrations. Uh, uh, he's much more favorable. Uh, the Russians are favorable, the Chinese are favorable to gold, and uh, uh, European Union also is very, very pro-gold. Uh, uh, the fact that they have uh, more gold than even the United States, and they never uh, sold those uh, gold reserves, uh, shows that in, in, in the new negotiations, with a lot of conflict rather than consensus, uh, SDR requires consensus. And I don't see with the election of Donald Trump with his hate for the International Monetary Fund, for international institutions. He just uh, chose uh, an ambassador to a uh, United Nation who's already looking to and trying to break up, uh, uh, to, to, to take United States out of uh, most of the programs and of the international institutions. Uh, she threatened uh, by, uh, by saying that, uh, 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 that uh, uh, from now on, uh, the new uh, strategy uh, is uh, you back United States or you are an enemy. A phrase that George W. Bush said after September 11 when he threatened France and Germany that if they don't back up in the war in Iraq, United States, they will, they will be treated like enemies. And Congress even went as far as the ridiculous uh, of trying to change the name of French fries in uh, the cafeteria in Congress. Uh, uh, I forgot the name uh, 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 that they wanted to change it from French fries to revolutionary or, or uh, national uh, fries or something like that. It was ridiculous, but it showed it. And the new ambassador to uh, the United Nations of the United States, she said exactly the same thing. Uh, 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 saying that uh, we'll, we'll, keep a tr we'll, we'll write a list of whoever contradicts us, whoever says a word against us, whoever doesn't stay behind us and applaud us like a bunch of sheep, they will be put on a list as enemies. She didn't say those words, but what, that's what she means when she says, back us or we'll take names. It is very clear the, the message is very clear of what, what she means uh, uh, she means by that. Donald Trump uh, uh, also prefers and has said it, and we can see it, that he wants a, 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 a lower dollar. A lower dollar against whom? Against the euro and against the yuan. That's the two challengers, the two currencies against, because they have the greatest, the largest trade surplus with the United States. There is an, another uh, uh, two aspects that makes me uh, bullish on gold. Uh, the new president uh, of the uh, United States uh, uh, imposes a style Carter with the southern United States. Uh, a lot of television shows started to make uh, uh, sh uh, soap operas with, uh, with Georgia, with Texas. It was fashionable at that time. Every time United States uh, uh, it's, uh, likes to uh, treat their presidents like kings and they try to copy and they make products. Uh, uh, if the president eats uh, chicken, uh, everybody's going to eat chicken. It's typical American uh, in, in doing that. And Donald Trump is very gold fanatic, gold bug, uh, as, as it's called. What do I mean by that? I mean by that in two ways. One way, Donald Trump uses gold and has used gold for his entire adult career as a symbol of wealth and power. 
So it's an image for Donald Trump. Uh, recently, he opened a hotel in Washington, the Trump International Hotel, and at the opening, he came with his daughter, uh, Ivanka, and they both held a shovel made out maybe of plated gold, but it was gold. Uh, when he uh, was asked how he wants to decorate, every president uh, decorates his, uh, uh, the, the Oval Office in his uh, uh, style, he changed the draperies and all the colors to gold. So Donald Trump gives incredible value to imagery. That's what he's done. He is not, he has not created no product in his entire other career. He has not created any, anything. His genius has been marketing. He's a perfect and exceptional salesman and marketeer. He's perfect in taking something worthless, packaging it in, in a luxury packages and sell it to a premium. That's his genius. And gold for him, it's part of the image of packaging. Gold around him shows him power, God. Uh, and that's why, and that's how he uses gold. But he also understands gold as money. He has read quite a lot and has been advised by a lot of people who are gold bugs or people like me. And he understands uh, a, a dollar backed by gold. I'm not sure if he's going to implement it. There are other reasons that make me believe he's not going to try it. As long as the dollar has an advantage, he's not going to abandon that advantage. But he understands that gold is money, and his whole economic philosophy of the international monetary system is the one that I agree with, and many people, of a gold-backed dollar. Okay, Not necessarily the, the unadulterated gold standard, which I like, which is one gram of gold, not any, any fiat, uh, value like the dollar, the euro linked to gold, which was the exchange standard before 1971, but a standard that there is where gold weight, one gram is the money, which is different from a gold exchange standard, which is a dollar certificate or an euro certificate exchangeable in gold. This is the type of standard that Donald Trump seems to prefer rather than the one because he still loves America first and the dollar is America. So he wants a dollar that dominates based on gold, not necessarily gold itself because he likes the image of gold rather than gold itself. At least that's my interpretation, but it is bullish for gold because he is somebody who will, uh, by imagery, by imagery, he's going to make gold fashionable. Making it gold fashionable, it's like uh, Paris Hilton, the Kardashian. Uh, Americans love to copy their superstar television superstars. So if Donald Trump uh, uh, has, uh, has a, a hat, over his head of a chicken, uh, Americans want to have a hat like a chicken. In Great Britain, you had the same thing with Prince Charles. When he was young, in his eight, age 18, 20, he was passionate of polo. And uh, polo became all of a sudden a sport that very few people in Great Britain were practicing. Nobody outside of the sophisticated, super rich, and not even super rich, but the sophisticated nobility, old nobility of UK was practicing polo. All of a sudden it became every rich person has to play polo. Polo became a worldwide sport. It was popularized that. Uh, Diana popularized products, things like that. America uh, likes to follow a stars who's, who's making a, uh, uh, using a product. So Donald Trump will use gold for his advantage, but a lot of 
jewelry industry, uh, fashion industry will create dresses in gold, uh, dresses uh, or shoes in uh, uh, gold, and jewelry in gold. So rather than uh, uh, silver or platinum, which were fashionable in the 80s, 90s, and more recently, you'll see a fashion in gold. At least that's my, uh, my analysis. So for that, Donald Trump is bullish for the jewel, gold jewelry, uh, uh, gold jewelry uh, industry. Another event that happened at the end of the year is uh, uh, the Sharia standard uh, that accepted gold-backed products, not gold. A lot of people make the mistake and confusion that now Muslims have discovered gold as Sharia compliant. Uh, 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 Mohammed uh, uh, recognizes gold, so that's good for the gold industry. That's completely false. Gold has been Sharia compliant for thousands of years. In the Muslim world, for thousands of years, they have been buying gold, not as an investment like Westerners do, but as they call it, as money to exchange it and wealth preservation. Americans cannot, North Americans can make, not make the distinction between investment and saving. For them, if you don't invest, you can't. You must invest. But there is a difference in between cash, savings, and investment. You invest in a business, cash is cash. You just hold it there. For thousands of years, Muslims have been storing profits they made in their life in gold jewelry, in gold. So they have not been, they are not going to discover gold because it has been declared Sharia compliant. And the Muslim religion, as already for thousands of years from the origin uh, in the Quran, uh, it is understood and, and they uh, accepted gold, physical gold. What this gold standard does is that it recognizes certificates, paper gold, as we call it, electronic gold, uh, 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 shares in mutual funds that buy gold. So this is not going to increase very much the demand for gold, but it will have a positive effect on gold for institutional uh, investors in the Muslim world which now can buy paper products in their portfolio. But the global population of Muslims from Indonesia to Egypt to Morocco to Saudi Arabia, it will not change in their mentality, their love and understanding of gold as a saving instrument, not an investment, as a saving instrument. What Sharia rule does is making gold as an investment a potential uh, uh, argument to buy gold. So it's not negative, should not be ignored, but it is not as big as some people pretend. At least that's my interpretation. So that is another good uh, positive for the increasing price of gold this year. So you have a uh, 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 rug of 10% uh, uh, um, uh, recommendation uh, to central banks to increase their gold reserves uh, uh, over 10% and sell U.S. treasuries, which is negative for the U.S. dollar, you have this international monetary crisis uh, collapse negotiations, which does not favor an SDR all based on paper currencies, but an SDR that might use gold to, to support itself uh, because Donald Trump doesn't like those international products uh, very much. Sharia gold rule. Go, uh, Donald Trump's infatuation with gold as a symbol of wealth and as a symbol of power. His desire to devalue the, the, the US dollar to to improve the, the trade, the balance of trade of United States, not only against Europe, but against other currencies. 
and also the demonetization uh, uh, that has been going on in India should not be ignored because I think in, in a way it will fail. It will fail because the reasons behind this are false. They are not, the use of gold is not the cause of corruption in India. Corruption is the cause Indians use gold, silver, and anything but the banking system. Mr. Rogoff and others consider that gold is the cause of the collapse of, uh, of the financial system and that they, we should ban the use of cash. But the use of cash is, is a symptom of the problem. Mr. Rogoff and the government of India, they are not proposing to solve the problem that causes the use of gold and, and, uh, and the denial, the non-use of the banking system and of electronic money, the reason that people don't use those systems is because they are corrupt, incompetent, and, and it doesn't work. That's why they use gold, silver, and anything outside of the banking system. So it's it, uh, Mr. Rogoff doesn't understand and Mr. Mo Modi in India, the Prime Minister, he wants to, to ban cash to stop corruption. But it's the other way around. If you want to stop the use of gold, you must increase trust in institution, in trust in the banking system, in uh, the trust in, in the tax system, in the government. If you don't cut corruption, Mr. Rogoff and Mr. Modi seems to believe that there is a, the only reason there is corruption in India is because gold exists, because physical gold exists. We ban gold, we ban uh, physical paper money, and all of a sudden corruption goes away because corruption, gold is the reason of corruption. It's the other way around. It's because there is corruption that people use gold, uh, silver, copper, anything just to get away from the government agencies, from the banking system. That's why I think that the demonetization of Mr. Modi will fail because he's not attacking corruption. He's not attacking the reason why people don't trust the banking system is corruption and the lack of knowledge, people understand the real thing. You don't need a PhD to an alphabets in India. The, the people who are not educated, they understand what gold is. They don't understand the imbecility of electronic and PhD, five derivative SDR stupidities. Okay? Every human being from a PhD to an analphabet knows what copper, what land, what up water, what silver is. They don't understand what a triple integral designed equation by a Black Scholes and PhD Nobel Prize in Economics tells the whole world, I know you are an engineer, I know you are an Indian an alphabet, but nobody, you are all stupid. All the economic PhDs have intelligence. And we need a mathematical equation designed at the Chicago School of Economics that only PhDs in economics understand. Because if I ask an economist what is an SDR, and if I ask him to give me the value of an SDR in two minutes, he can't. But if I ask an analphabet in India or in Egypt or in Chicago what gold is, he will tell me what it is. He will tell me what copper is. Okay? You don't need to be a PhD in economics with a super specialization in international monetary system to understand gold, water, bread, land. But even with a PhD in economics from the Chicago School of Economics, you can't explain a CDR. I've studied the CDR since the 1970s, 
And I can tell you that if you ask me right now, what's the value of an SDR and how it is calculated, I can't. I need books. I need my papers to give you the exact value of it and how it is calculated. And it's only made out of five currencies today. It used to be 16 currencies. Why do you think in 1973, PhDs in economics and finance working for the central banks chose the US dollar rather than choosing the SDR, which was composed of 16 currencies. And at that time, I will remind you people, there was no calculators to do the calculations. You had to do it by hand. The, the calculators were big like that. I showed you in a previous and only did addition, subtraction, and multiplication in the 70s. So no surprise that even PhD from the Chicago School of Economics working for the Federal Reserve said, I'm not touching a C SDR because I will show how stupid I am. I would rather use the US dollar and still keep the gold because that I understand. But don't tell anybody. I, want, I like to show people that I, I look intelligent. I'm stupid, but I want to, people to believe. I put Botox in my face, like in Hollywood, to pretend I understand, but I don't understand anything. This is why, this is the problem, if you want, with the SDRs. So Donald Trump seems to be of the old school like me. He understands gold. He understands the principles of gold. And he wants, uh, uh, he's favorable to that. But he's in a conflict with, I want America to dominate. And for the moment, the dollar dominates. So uh, he would like something that supports the dollar and that everybody adopts again the dollar. That's my interpretation, at least. But in any case, this is bullish for gold. Uh, for next year. All those conflicts are, are, are bullish for gold. Uh, uh, another thing that I want to mention uh, is uh, all, those, uh, uh, all those trade wars that you are starting to see, uh, and there is a danger, unfortunately, they might end up in, in a real physical war, uh, war because the, 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 the antagonism between the um, United States and China is quite big. Uh, it has not uh, gone away, and I expect it uh, uh, to amplify uh, even more. And uh, uh, the relation between United States and Russia, I said it several times, uh, it, is, uh, it is very deep in the American psyche, this hate, and considering uh, Russia as in the enemy, I favor the idea of openness that Donald Trump has brought towards Russia. It's also very good in the interest of the Europe, uh, Euro, of Europe. Uh, but there is uh, the recent polls, the re recent analysis, and not just polls, but interviews with Trump supporters, with Republicans and Democrats. They are very, very anti-Russian. There is this imagery that has been built for about 50, 60 years of uh, the bad Soviet, the bad Russian, and when I talk not nicely about, uh, about Russia on Twitter, I get a reaction very often and I'm accused what Americans like to call uh, Russians uh, when they attack you. They usually say, you are a commie, abbreviation for communist. But it is a, uh, it is a, a kind of a, an imagery, what they mean is the Soviets, the Russians. This mentality is still there. I am an anti-communist, a victim of communist, two grandparents killed by the communist, a brother killed by the communist, my father tortured by the communist. We suffered from the Soviet occupation, but I still analyze and realize that the Russia of today, it's not the same Russia of the Soviet Union. It's still authoritarian, and Putin still has its issues. But it is not the same. You cannot look at it as the Soviet. China is also a different case. It's much closer to the old communist of Mao. But even China has changed. You cannot analyze it with the same optics of the Soviet Union. Unfortunately, around Donald Trump, 
And a lot of Republicans, but also Democrats like Hillary Clinton, still look at China and at Russia through the Soviet uh, communist era. And I think it's a big mistake. You have to evolve and as, as times change and reanalyze and actualize your uh, analysis. So I think that all those conflicts and situation, I think that this year is the year uh, in November, it was the end of the Pax Americana. Uh, uh, we've moved into a G0. There is no sign of anyone taking control of the, uh, of the world. Uh, no sign that uh, China, but China is really working hard to become the leader of the world. I don't think that they will achieve it. There is uh, m m uh, a lot of uh, reserve also towards the hegemony of, uh, of China. Uh, people are, are, don't like the hegemony of the United States, but they are also very uh, 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 scared of the Chinese. And there are situations right now with countries in, uh, in Africa who are starting to rebel against, uh, against China. So China doesn't have its advantage either. So there is a, 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 an international uh, a geopolitics in which there is nobody that dominates yet. China trying to become a leader, I'm not sure that they will achieve it. Uh, uh, but there are four players working in the geopolitical system right now Still United States, but not as powerful, not as unique as they used to be. China, European Union, who's getting stronger. I am bullish on Europe and uh, Russia for this year, and I'm bearish on, uh, on uh, uh, United States and UK. United States and UK, I think they are going through a social uh, 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 civil war, if you want, political civil war, not uh, uh, military. But a political scenario, and we've seen the events this weekend in the United States, things are going very bad. And in UK, the country, and the two elections, uh, the referendum in UK and the election in the United States have shown that the population is not 70% on one side, but split in the middle, 50-50, and very polarized. It's not just split, they are decide very... Uh, impossible to change their mind, stuck there, so it's very hard to, to, to change a 10% on the other side, but they are convinced, so it, uh, this split divide in, right in the middle, and so, uh, uh, so polarized, both in UK, in, uh, uh, in UK and United States, will weaken those two countries uh, extensively. I think uh, Europe had its problems and it was in, in an awful situation like UK uh, and United States. It was last year, it is slowly coming out, not out of danger, but slowly coming out. I think that the election of Donald Trump will strengthen the European Union, rather than, it has the opposite effect, will strengthen it. And I think that the election of Fillon in France and Merkel in Germany will give a very strong European leadership from what I read of what Mr. Fillon and Merkel are writing about it, and an opening to, to Russia, and a, taking distance from the United States, but not completely rupturing from the United States. So, uh, uh, for that. So, uh, those four players, Russia, Vladimir Putin has to be very careful because internally he has, the economy is not doing that well, but I'm bullish. I think he's going into the right direction from an economic point of view. He still has to fight a lot of corruption and, uh, 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 and, and diversify the economy from oil. China has to fight and they are doing, Xi is doing an incredible job on corruption. But you have to be careful because a lot of the co uh, corruption war is mainly to, to, to centralize power and eliminate uh, uh, potential opponents and put in place his favorite people, uh, leaving in place the corrupt bureaucracy, but which support him. So you have to be careful. So none of them, uh, uh, it's not out of the woods if you want. Uh, an economic crisis will affect all of them, and that is bullish for gold. That's why I'm very bullish for gold 
in uh, uh, 2017. So uh, uh, the last thing very fast that I want to mention is that uh, very often people associate a bullish market in gold and a bearish in stocks uh, in the Dow and uh, uh, gold against the US dollar. Uh, gold is a currency against all the paper currencies. So you can have gold going up against the dollar and the euro uh, and all Swiss franc and all the paper currencies. It doesn't have to go opposite with the dollar and only with the dollar. So the dollar can go up against the euro, but can go down against, uh, uh, against gold. Now, gold is cash. So if there's an economic crisis, markets go down because the economy goes down. Businesses don't make money. So people go into cash. Gold is cash. It's hard cash. So in a way, the market goes down, gold doesn't necessarily go down, but people move into cash, they move into gold. But if there is devaluation of currency of the US dollar, both real assets, which are stocks, and gold will, will not go up, but because the dollar goes down, the unit of exchange of the dollar goes down, both gold and stock market will appear to go up. But in reality, they both stay flat. It's the dollar that goes down. So it is possible for the gold and real asset stocks to go up together versus imaginary cash, which is the dollar. Okay? So things are not as simple. They are much more complex. Okay, keep in mind, that's something that I wanted to mention because I hear very often people saying, uh, how is it possible that the, the stock market goes up and gold goes up together, or the dollar goes up and the gold goes up. Uh, it's, it's because there is complex relation, there is an economic boom that makes people get out of cash, including gold, into real assets, into producing assets like stocks and there is a situation where the unit of exchange uh, uh, the virtual unit of exchange imaginary one the dollar the euro and all that loses its value and in that case real assets like gold real estate and stocks appear to go up but in reality they just stayed flat okay so you mix them together and you get confusion. <laughs> this is what I wanted to, uh, to speak in this first report. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a year, uh, very excited, a lot of uncertainty in the markets uh, because of all this situation, uh, because uh, Donald Trump is a very unpredictable, not that unpredictable, but he's going to break the system uh, collapse the system and when you do that uh, you might repair it and rebuild it from scratch better or it might end up worse than it was before you don't know it and that uncertainty is bullish for gold and silver real assets if you want uh, gold and silver being just the most uh, uh, marketable and the most liquid but they are no different than land or a car or uh, re real assets in general, okay? So, uh, and we've seen signs of uh, inflation coming back, uh, especially here in Canada because of the devaluation to, of the Canadian dollar, uh, but worldwide and great bit and also the situation since Brexit. So this is what I wanted to speak uh, in this report, uh, first report in, uh, in, in January, uh, uh, bullish for, uh, for gold. And uh, we'll see how it evolves. I think it's going to be each report will bring some surprises. Donald Trump is uh, likes to likes to surprise. Uh, uh, maybe sometimes I hope into the positive uh, way, but I think he's uh, going on the, in the direction of uh, surprising in in the, in the negative way. So uh, uh, we'll see what that brings. But that is uh, uh, uncertainty. Uh, is bullish for uh, for gold and silver. Uh, in uh, in the recent weeks, we have uh, uh, the gold price uh, moving up. Uh, there was a correction. 
and now it is going up it is coming down again I think it's a consolidation I don't expect it to break it up uh, break to the upside before April but I do expect it and I think that uh, the infatuation with uh, with Trump will uh, by the market stock market will collapse sometimes from February to April plus we have the debt issue in the United States the negotiation in uh, the, the the debt limit in uh, in uh, April May uh, and the two meetings of the G7 and G20 in May and uh, uh, July, May and June, and the election in France uh, in uh, in June, I think. Uh, and so, events that can influence the price of gold. So until next time, have a happy New Year, everybody.